Hello there, brothers and sisters. This is Nun Superior. Today we'll take a look at uh, Heroes and Generals. This is a... Well, it's a combination of two games, but mainly it's a first-person World War II action shooter with vehicles and airplanes and anti-tank weapons and tanks and bicycles and all kinds of craziness. So I've been playing this for a couple days, and I just wanted to share some... Uh, some some tricks that I've learned that weren't quite explained in the tutorial. Now this is actually the the tutorial we're playing here. It's called First Blood. Um, so there'll be some obvious stuff in this tutorial that I'll be showing you. But I'm going to try and use this as a uh, as a as a grounds as a training grounds to show you some of the other tips and tricks I've learned while playing the game that are not really explained to you in the tutorial, or if they are, they're kind of hard to to find. So first off, we're just gonna this is my pistol. And I'm going to grab, you can uh, grab other things that are lying on the ground by pressing E, of course. There's a Gewehr 43, carabiner. So you've got uh, semi-auto rifles, you've got bolt-action rifles, you've got light machine guns, you've got submachine guns, and i got my little pistol out here. So just for sake of argument, I'm going to pick up the semi-auto, because this is the starting weapon, so you're going to spend a lot of time with this weapon. So one thing to note is the headshots make a big difference. Take your time and aim. Um, one thing I've noticed in this game, press control to duck. That's very important. Press Z to go prone. And when you're prone, you can't turn around very fast. This is me turning as quickly as I can. Um, and let's see how quickly. Z again to get up. So you can't just really run and can't quite do dolphin dives like you can in some games, but you can do a little bit of it. All right, so I'm going to take these guys out here. Headshots. One thing to note also, you're going to spend a lot of time compensating for movement, trying to hit guys on the run, because in this game, everybody's moving all the time. Just run, 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 run. So get comfortable with leading your shots a little bit. I'm going to run over here. And you also have hand grenades in this game, so I'm going to pick up this hand grenade. Here's how hand grenades work. The longer you hold down the left mouse button, the longer they will go. And then to extent, then you've got to start elevating up in order to get them the rest of the way. They also are kind of crappy. In terms of, man, they don't do much damage at all. Uh, so I, I haven't gotten that many kills with them. There's a good one but it, don't expect them to be as effective as they are in a lot of other games. Here's the anti-tank weapon. Okay, here's one important tip. When you right-click to go into zoom on the anti-tank mode, if you use your mouse wheel and go up and down, you can change the range. If you look in the lower right-hand corner, you can see I'm at 150 meters, I pull down, I go to 100 meters, I pull down, I go 50. That'll change where the set point is. So I'll shoot it at 150 meters and you'll watch, it'll go right over this tank because it's set to hit the target that I'm aiming at at 150 meters. Well, that target is much too close, so I'm going to dial it down to 50, shoot it again, boom, dead on target. Let's do it again. Let's hit the rear of it. There we go. So that's an important... Uh, it, being effective against tanks is a very, very important aspect of this game when you're playing artillery, or excuse me, infantry. So that's a uh, important thing to notice. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is they have you get up here and grab the sniper rifle. There's an important thing to know about the sniper rifle. I want to show it in the right corner. All right. So here's a sniper rifle. Again, same thing. You can adjust the sights or the sights centered 100, 200, 400. So I'm going to say that guy's at, let's say he's 200 meters. I'm going to hit for his head. Knocked him right out. But had I shot that at 100, it would have dropped and I would have hit his body. Now the last thing it shows you in the tutorial, which honestly I haven't even used in the game yet because I'm playing at too low levels, but uh, is the anti-aircraft gun. Uh, not much to know about this here other than um, the way the anti-aircraft gun is. They're very slow to turn, and you really don't have to lead your target very much at all. So I'm going to try and just get right, just right in front of them. Man, I'm sucking at this. Okay, and if the lower right-hand corner, you can see it reloading as the bar slides up. That happens on uh, all the vehicles, all the tanks, with the machine guns, all that stuff. God 
die already. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna hop out here. Okay, this is the deployment screen. As you can see here, there's all these uh, blue spots. These are the spots that I can deploy at if I want to. And then the one with the kind of star around it is kind of where the most action is. And you can see the other red one. Uh, in this game, blue is always uh, your team and red is always the uh, enemy team. And I'm sorry if you're colorblind. Uh, I don't think this thing has colorblind mode. I haven't checked, though. Actually, let me check really quick. Mm, nope. 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 Sorry. Anyway. So I can choose where to spawn here. If I click on here, it'll zoom in and it'll actually show me where I'm going to spawn. And I will spawn randomly somewhere around here. And if you notice, your icon is a little uh, magnifying glass minus. So if you press left mouse again, you can zoom out. And you can zoom in on any territory you want to. And sometimes you won't necessarily want to spawn at the closest location. You want to spawn off to one side and try to flank. But for this point, uh, I'm going to spawn in. If you mouse over the left, you can see your uh, soldier here. This is what equipment you've got. Don't know if there's a way to change it in game. I'll let you know if I can find that. So far, it doesn't look like you can. Maybe you can uh, jump back out to the browser. I'm not sure. Over here, you've got different uh, teams that are happening. So I can. There's uh, two assault teams, and there's another assault. Oh, these are guard assault teams and regular assault teams. And I can join one of these if I want to. So I'll join this one. And I will spawn at this location. But you can see right how you can see all the action going on. So you don't have to necessarily spawn in blind. You can say, ah, huh, there's a tank over there. There's a guy over there. I think when I get in, I'm going to try and do this and that and the other thing. So let me get in. Uh, when you spawn in, you're invisible for a few seconds, but you can't do a lot of stuff. You can't crouch. You can't pick anything up. You can't shoot. You're kind of a, a bit of a ghost for a second. It doesn't give you much time to adapt to what's going on, but it does give you a, a moment or two to kind of get your bearings. Take advantage of that if you can. All right, so as we run in here, the most important thing in this game that I've noticed is be aware of your surroundings. Look around, make sure nobody's sneaking up behind you, because they will. You will get shot in the back off, and you will get hit with a shovel in the back of the head several times. You will get tank rounds up your butthole. It will happen. It will be unpleasant. But, you know, the most important thing is to try and keep it from happening as often as possible. Uh, be careful when crossing open spaces like this. It is super dangerous. Again, the most important thing is seeing the enemy, knowing where they are, knowing what's going on. You will usually kill guys like this where they are not looking at you. You will get most of your kills that way if, if, you're, if you're doing your job right. If they're surprising you a lot, well, you might want to stay away from the fight a little bit and get your bearings before going in. So, much like uh, the Battlefield series, you can get into vehicles, you can spawn vehicles if you've unlocked them, uh, and you've actually uh, paid the credits to spawn them in. Unfortunately, I don't have any on these, this character right now because I'm saving up for an anti-tank weapon, because uh, fighting light, light tanks and vehicles is just seems like it's super important in this game. So I'm saving my pennies at this moment, but I'll show you as soon as I get that unlocked in a future video. Now right there is the most important vehicle, I think. The bicycle. Yeah, that's right. Whoa, who's shooting at me? There's somebody... Yep, oh, there he is. See that guy up in the tower? Alright, sir. Let's see if I can grenade him. Probably not. Nope. Can't get it up there. Ah, I got shoveled! See? Wasn't paying attention, and the friggin' shoveler got me. Ah, nothing more embarrassing. You, you'll get a, a, a blue or a yellow triangle over people's... Basically, if there's a, tri a triangle over their head, they're on your team. If there's nothing, they're on the enemy team. But sometimes when you're uh, kind of close to guys, it'll take some time to fade in, and so you'll just, just be aware of your targets. Yes, you can shoot... Oops, that was me shooting the wrong guy because I didn't, I didn't see his uh, triangle. The way the sights work in this game, the sights really blow and you'll end up kind of fighting your sights a lot. He done. 
Okay, here's a vehicle that spawned in. I believe that's... See, it's got a lock on it. I believe that means that either it spawned because somebody paid for it or the general paid for it. So if I stand here and hold down E, you'll notice the little unlock icon. I can unlock this vehicle and make it available for me and other people to drive. So I'm just going to hang out here for a second. Oh, the other thing to notice is on the back of this, it's got a little uh, ammo thing. Yes, you can grab... Let's see, what has it got on the back here? Uh, not sure. Maybe this guy would get in. Press left mouse to beep the horn. That usually lets people know that you're there and that uh, you're ready to drive around. If I'm careful, I can snipe that machine gunner. <laughs> Always remember, button up. Not a whole lot of value in sticking your nose out there, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, so this area has a lock on it right now, meaning it's in conflict, so I can't spawn at it. I have to spawn if I want to at the nearest location. Okay, so you can zoom in with your semi-automatic weapon. Not very far, but if you hold or press B, bring up your binoculars, hold down right mouse button, now you zoom in. Now let go of your right mouse button. See, I get him right about there. Let go of your right mouse button. Don't move your mouse. Press B again to bring up your rifle. Right mouse again to zoom in and fire. And you'll be zoomed in on the same spot as before. I've used this a bunch of times to get some pretty long-range snipes in without having an actual sniper rifle. You know, the biggest problem is that this rifle, the uh, the drop on it will mean that you won't do very much damage, so you probably won't kill them. You probably have to shoot multiple times at them. Alright, so here's one of these little equipment stations. If you come over to it and you press E, You'll resupply. If you look in the lower right, my ammo count went up. So it'll resupply your ammo and it'll resupply your health. You just gotta hold E until both are filled up. Or until you start getting shot at and you need to run the heck away. Either one. Alright, one thing to remember is. When you're in a vehicle like this, you can hold down right mouse button to zoom in. Yeah, you're, you're super exposed uh, in those Jeep machine gunner positions. Um, I don't know. I'd say if you're driving a Jeep and you're delivering people to a location, stop at a nice secure spot behind a rock or big cluster of trees before you get too close because everybody inside the Jeep is super duper exposed, including yourself, and an easy target. I shoot at guys in Jeeps all the time. They're real easy kills. So this game is about capturing points, and what you want to do is stand near the radio uh, that indicates the point. You can see the radio off to the left there. What you'll get is a, if you're near it, is a little capturing indicator. It will, you know, count down. Now what you're seeing here is the little lock indicator, which means that there's another enemy or multiple enemies nearby. And I need to remove them from the situation before I can actually capture it. Oh, see, there's the radio. Bicycles don't cost anything, and trucks don't cost anything. So if you see uh, one of these little interactable vehicles lying around, you know what? Take it for a spin. You can steal vehicles uh, that nobody's using right now. Uh, even if they're allies or if they're uh, Axis, depending on whatever team you're on. And you don't even have to have it unlocked, apparently. You can use the mouse wheel up and down to change views. Pop your head out by going up or down inside. Just press C to change seats from passenger to driver. I'm in the... 2C light vehicle shooting machine guns at another light vehicle that also has machine guns. But 
that's enough for me to blow it up. Vehicle health is down there in the uh, lower left. Beware of other like vehicles and other tanks, because they can blow you up. Especially when you've got barely any health left. Well, I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks. I'll be adding more as I learn them, get better experienced with the game. But from one noob to another, I hope this helped. If you liked the video, press thumbs up. Throw some comments in there, especially if I screwed something up. And if you want to see more videos like this and for other games, don't forget to subscribe. This is None Superior. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I will see ya.